This past month have been very difficult to each and every one of us. This pandemic is indeed a challenge to us as individuals, testing our patience, our resilience, and even our mental health. On behalf of the PUP Society of Biology Students, we are hoping that this video finds you well. And though you didn't get a chance to experience the iconic first day of college, and we have to do this virtually, still, the PUP Biology Community officially welcome you! Pagbati sa mga bagong iskolar ng bayan, maligayang pagdating sa mundo ng hainayan. I am Lainis Ariego, and I will be guiding you from the start to the end of today's event. Welcome to Bring It On, the state of Philippine biology during the new normal. PUP Society of Biology Students General Assembly, year 2020. Today, Albert Online, we are happy to conduct this General Assembly, which aims to guide you in different matters about this biology course and to introduce to you both the social and academic aspect of our department as you transition to higher education. Moreover, we want you to take a glimpse on the future opportunities and career that are in store for you, of which we invited four special guests. Amazing, right? But before that, let us hear a message from the current SBS advisor, the very modern and one of the pillar of biology, Dr. Lourdes Alvarez. Ma'am? To the Dean of the College of Science, Dr. Lincoln A. Bautista, the chairperson of the Department of Biology, Professor Carmelita P. Mapanao, the co-advisor of the SBS, Professor Maria Eleanor C. Salvador, my fellow faculty members, our guest speakers for today, who are all alumni of the BS Biology Program, Ms. Kim Berlineri, Master of Science in Microbiology candidate, Mr. Jero Chris Manulat, Mark David de Guzman, Dr. Naomi Bless Aduna, the officers of the SBS, and to our beloved BS Biology students. A pleasant morning to all. It is a great pleasure to welcome you all in this school year 2020-2021 General Assembly of the SBS of the BS Biology Program. I wish to congratulate each of you, first of all the freshmen, on having secured their university place and for having the good sense to choose to study BS Biology in PUP. Second, for all the second year and third year students for spending their productive years in the program and at the same time maintaining high grades in spite of the different challenges they've faced in the past years. I must say, BS Biology is not an easy course. It takes a lot of patience, perseverance, hard work, dedication, and determination to finish the course with the bulk of assignments special problems, class activities, theses, and many others. But I believe that all of you are determined to take the challenges, not just to secure for your future and have a decent job someday, but to acquire meaningful knowledge in the study of life. The Department of Biology puts the student at the center of everything it does. Your experience in this program and your success is very important to us. For the freshmen, 
Your arrival at PUP marks a new horizon in the story of your life. And this horizon is a bit different. Before, you were strictly guided by your parents, guardians, families, teachers, and the like. But now, you'll be the main driver as you are entering this new horizon. You will have the opportunity to determine the direction, the design, the speed, beat, time of your future path. This can seem as challenging as it is empowering, but the great thing is that you are doing something that you have chosen to do, not something that was chosen for you by others. And while you are here at PUP, you will have the opportunity to learn new things, acquire new knowledge, develop new skills, and enhance your personal attributes in profound ways that will equip you for life after the university. At the same time, you will make new friends who will become your friends for life, with whom you will share memories of your PUP days and for many years to come. This school year will not be as normal as the regular school years before because we are facing the pandemic of COVID-19. The mode of learning is very different since we cannot do it in a normal mode. Nevertheless, the week and for the next few weeks, you'll still be likely to be bombarded with information. And I am aware, most especially the freshmen, will somehow be amazed with the new learning lifestyle and information overload. Nonetheless, I wish to share three pieces of advice uh, which I borrowed from one speech. Number one, take responsibility for learning. This school year, we are in pandemic and the students are being given all the considerations for learning. The mode is very much different with the normal face-to-face -face mode. But because of the situation, you will be given the ample time to learn and explore without so much guidance by your teacher. Hence, you need to be responsible enough to do all the tasks that are being given to you by your professor so that no amount of time will be wasted. Number two, make the most of your time. This time of pandemic, I guess you will have more time for learning with minimal supervision. It will be much better to maximize your time in learning rather than do other things that are not really helpful for your study. Do advanced readings, do advanced research, explore other possibilities for learning. Treat time as gold, treat time as precious gems, so that, no, so that all your time will be expended in all meaningful ways. And number three, embrace difference. At this time, you have no chance yet, the opportunity to meet your classmates and schoolmates personally. But if you do, and when the circumstances allow, try to seek friends that will bring the best in you, that will influence you to do good and will walk with you in the proper path of learning. Also, Try to connect with others, not only with the people within the PUP community, but with other universities, with other institutions, or if possible, with the people and experts abroad that will help you broaden your capabilities, not only as future biologists, but as a citizen who can contribute change for the betterment of the society. May these three pieces of advice, along with the wisdom and learnings based from the true to life experiences that will be shared by our guest speakers, may serve as an inspiration to all of you. As you are taking your journey towards a successful completion of the BS Biology program, and I am sure that you will find it an immensely rewarding experience. Good day to all of us and mabuhay. Salamat. Thank you, Mom Alvarez, for that inspiring message. 
I'm sure that students are now looking forward to more adventures upon their stay in biology. All right, now moving forward, let's proceed to the first speaker. Our first speaker is an alumnus of PUP Manila, Bachelor of Science in Biology, Batch 2018 to 2019, an aspiring conservation biologist and is currently a special science teacher. He was a junior level scholar of the OST Science Education Institute from 2017 to 2019. His undergraduate thesis and research studies include Floral Inventory of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Mulanay Quezon Province, Phylogenetic Analysis and DNA Barcoding of the Endemic and Critically Endangered Hedicule Filipinense. He also worked as project manager research associate and administrative office assistant of GECC Environmental Services from 2019 to 2020. His previous achievements and projects include Enclosure Habilitation and Breeding Program of Captive Philippine Pan Turtles in Manila Zoological and Botanical Garden. Also, the development of tools to monitor, measure, and evaluate cave ecosystem health and sustainability of cave projects in Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. Very young age, this man right here has achieved so much already, having a heart and a mind that is dedicated to conservation and restoration. Please welcome a good friend of mine, the oh so passionate Mr. Mark David Tigusman. David? A pleasant day to all of you, Kabayos. Uh, this is the PUPS Biology General Assembly for the Plant Biology Track, and I'm honored to welcome all of you to the biology community. 13 years of academic excellence and since it has been established way back in 2007 and years have passed and yet we are here continuing the legacy of a, a, a department of diversity but one as a family. So I'm to present you and strongly encourage you to take the plant botany track where we are learning and having extreme fun at the same time. So if you are adventurous and um, uh, if you love nature walking, this is the best track for you. So, to give you an idea on how my presentation will run, so here's the outline of my presentation. So first, why choose BS Biology? So of course, enlightening you on what BS Biology program can offer you. Second one is Plant Biology Track 101. Of course, as the main subject of this presentation, on what do we do in the botany track. Of course, our institution facility, which is the PUP Herbarium, where we store all of our specimens, our plant library, as we call it. The, sec now, the next one is botany field and laboratory to give you some look or insights on the studies that we did across the country during our term in the college in systematic botany and, of course, phycology. The highlight of this talk, the botanical publications, for the new discoveries and features from our plant bio alumni. So the next one will be Botany reaching out to the community, uh, featuring the first PUP Herbarium Extension Program in general now for Quezon Province. And of course, the last, what can we do? To give you some insights and what else can we do or what else a young botanist or a young biologist can do. So to give you some information about me, your botany track speaker, I'm Mark David S. Guzman, a biologist, and of course, I'm an alumnus of the PUPBS Biology Department, Batch 2019, a Department of Science and Technology, junior level science scholar of the Science Education Institute. I'm an environmentalist, I have worked with an environment consultancy company and manage a project on the development of tools to monitor, measure, and evaluate cave health ecosystem and sustainability of cave projects under the Palawan Council of Sustainable Development. And now I'm a special science teacher at the Tondo High School, Senior High School Department, and I'm a nature conservation advocate. So, so much for that. I'm going back to the presentation. I bet you may be thinking the same exact question before enrolling or taking this course. So why would you choose BS Biology for your course in the college. So don't you worry because actually you have chosen a path of success. Of course, that is true. In this biology, you can open so many doors you never thought you could open before. 
as we all know, or as some of you do know, BS Biology is, isn't just a course or a program. BS Biology is a multifaceted track, meaning there's a lot of specializations to choose from and a lot of studies to take from. Of course, a lot of opportunities you can pursue in the future. So it features both field and laboratory work, allowing you to test your understanding and to gain knowledge through direct experiences in the different fields and specialization of study, whether in botany, microbiology, environmental protection, the medical course, of course, zoology, and so much more to choose from. Well, you can actually encompass different fields depending on your area of specialty. For example, uh, as from experience, during my internship, I have worked with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Biodiversity Management Bureau, National Wildlife Research and Rescue Center, as a clinician and animal care specialist where we handle different rescued animals from invertebrates to amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. And of course, in our thesis, I have, I have pursued a botanical track where I am, well, I think, um, excelling in systematic botany subject and plant morphology and anatomy during my early years in biology course. Well, after finishing the biology, as I have mentioned, I have pursued the management, uh, project management career in the environmental consultancy company and worked with uh, government institutions and agencies such as DNR, Environmental Management Bureau, Department of Agriculture, Philippine Gold Refinery Corporation, and Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, for which I have a project handled with the title, a development of tools to monitor, evaluate, keep health ecosystem and sustainability of cave projects, which aims to develop and monitor caves for sustainable ecotourism and proper environmental management on the different caves in Palawan. So when you say botany, it's a vast, uh, subject that includes all, all plant forms and the processes related to them. So there are actually a small number of people that are interested and inclined to this uh, track or subject. And we actually consider ourselves as an endangered species because we need to empower plant biology more than ever. So to give you an idea on, or to give you an idea of what the botanical track can offer, let me guide you and show you how we work in plant biology. Oh, so of course, I hope after this, after this talk, I hope you will get encouraged and take, uh, take this course in the future after this talk. I assure you it will be fun and adventurous. So for the plant biology track, this track is rooted in high regard for plant life. So plant knowledge has a broad applications for preserving human life and our natural world. So careers in botany spotlight the innovative use of plants to improve human well-being and some careers entail environmental protection. Among them are finding medical cures, breeding hardy crabs, and saving endangered plant species from the brink of extinction. So here are some of the exciting subjects grounded in plant science. So of course we have the ethnobotany that deals with the systematic study of plant lore of indigenous cultures. After that, we have dendrology to study trees, plant ecology to study the effects of plants and the environment. We have plant genetics to study the makeup of the plant down to, it, down to its genes. We have pteridology to study ferns and fern allies. We have horticulture on the science and art of growing fruits, vegetables, flowers, and ornamental plants. We have mycology that deals with algae, mycology on the study of fungi. And although this both course, the mycology and phycology are some, sometimes placed under microbiology in some instance, uh, plant tissue culture to grow plants using different types of tissues derived from it, Plant cell biology, further study on the plant cell makeup. Plant anatomy, to study the parts and forms of plant structures and its specific uses. We have plant physiology, 
to study the function of beach plant parks and makeup. We have plant systematics, our favorite subject that deals with plant taxonomy and the arrangement of plant groups in the biogenetic tree. We have bryology to study bryophytes, agricultural science of studying crops, crop production, and technology. We have plant pathology to study different plant diseases and so many more subjects to choose from. In terms of facilities, don't worry because we have the beauty herbarium. So some of you don't know yet what is an herbarium, most especially for the freshmen. So uh, to give you an idea, an herbarium is a collection of preserves, plants stored, cataloged, and arranged systematically for study by professionals as well as amateurs from many walks of life, including, uh, including young biology students such as you. And you can actually think of it as a plant, as a library of dried plant specimens used for both education and research. A collection like this is a vital reference when you need to identify a plant and also serves to fix forever the identity of thousands of plant bees. So this is an important institution because botanists all over the world de uh, deposit their sample specimens here as a documentation for future and further studies. So the significance of, of, her, of an herbarium is perpetual. Uh, for in some instances, uh, plant science are, that are believed, uh, plant, species, plant species that are believed to be extinct are being resurrected after comparing an actual specimen to a stored preserved specimen in, our, in a, an herbarium. So the plant library, the Pupa Herbarium is a department spearheaded by Assistant Professor Maria Eleanor Salvador under the Institution of Science and Technology Research at PUP, spearheaded by Dr. Armin S. Coronado, that holds a collection of specimens from preserved plants to fungi, algae that are collected across the country by our researchers deposited and stored here for future and further studies. Uh, the students of the PUP biology program. You may visit their barium, the new building. To give you a look of what to see inside the PUP herbarium, here are some of the features to throw you around. So the plant, pan the plant family black boxes where you can find stored and preserved plant specimen across different plant families in general. So aside from that, we have carpological collection on the right side of the picture for studying wet mounted and dried fruits and seeds collected and uh, that are obtained from plant samples. So for example, you can see this Sijung Guhava mountain specimen in the Mertasi box and this Sperus Tutundus mounted specimen inside the Sperasi box. So here are some uh, samples of plant fruits that you can find in the carpological collections of the PUP herbarium. Here's a work please. So here's where you mount your dried specimen in herbarium sheets. Here's where you find your reference in identifying the taxon of your plant specimen and describe it in the information sheet. So of course we have different specialization and field of interest in studying botany. We have botany subjects doing field works and botany subjects that are doing laboratory works. So for the botany in field and laboratory. Systematic botany is a branch of biology that deals with the study of classification systems and the manufacture of plants. So its main objectives are to provide scientific names for plants, to describe plants, to preserve collections of plants, to provide and apply classification systems, to help identify plants, to determine the distribution of plants, to investigate the evolutionary histories of plant groups, and to study the environmental adaptations of plants. So if you picture a systematic botany subject, you will imagine this same tree that you are seeing here and the plant evolutionary history starting from algae up to the bryophyte group, to the teridophyte, to the gymnosperm, up to the advanced angiosperm groups, or I hope you get interested by taking this track. 
So here's what we did in our case sampling for our study for inventory of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Mulanay, Quezon Province. So part of documentation is important as this will be your guide in, a, in identifying your plan sample. Aside from that, this will be the interface of your plan sample in your paper. Here are some example shots by my thesis mate, Tristan Valle, during our field sampling in UP Mulanay campus in Quezon Province. So from black, we have the Pitesilobium dulce or Kamatsile. We have the Klein Hobias Pita, Hamelia Patens or Don Manuel, Abutilon Indicum or Malbas. We have Passiflora Poetida in the middle, your passion fruit. Gericidia Sepium or Madre de Cacao. We have Picus Olmifolia or Isis, Flaminia Strabilifera, and Picus Septica or Hawini. The next step will be the collection of plant samples. So please take note that this was permitted for studying purpose only. So in collection of plant samples, your specimen should have both vegetative and reproductive parts. So when you say vegetative, it's the leaves and the stems. And for a productive part, you have flowers and fruits. So as you can see in the collected plant samples, we have both parts of the plant. I haven't properly thanked my thesis mates, Timulalai, for this. So thank you for all the experiences and hardships that we have shared together. I'll make gratitude to the both of you, Tristan and Audrey. Aside from the team that we that we have, so we have our colleagues in the UPLG Laguna, Quezon Land Grant, who studied on the Sugibarasi of the UPLG, a uh, UPLB Laguna, Quezon Land Grant, and their pollen morphology for their thesis. So what you're seeing here is Amelou and Alison documenting their samples by geotagging using a GPS or global positioning system. Collection of samples are and securing it in an airtight Ziploc container to avoid immediate dehydration of plant samples. So by the way, uh, their study is comparative pollen morphology uh, of Sivnibrasi species in University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Laguna, Quezon, Landran. Here's Pansipi Triver team who, conduct, who conducted a floral inventory or, and floral assessment on their parian system of the Pansipi Triver in Batangas. So their study is vegetation, and, uh, vegetation assessment of downstream riparian flora of Pansipi Triver in Batangas, Philippines. Uh, heading down south to the team Isla Verde, who conducted their assessment in Isla Verde Island or, or Verde Island in Batangas. So this time, they did a quadrat method of sampling to assess the flora of the island. So their study is beach forest vegetation analysis of two western coastal barangays of Verde Island in Batangas. Aside from studying, it is very interesting to document plants that are often that are not often seen. So this was in Mount Binuang and Kidadaya Falls in the General Nakar uh, Quezon Province, southern portion of the Sierra Madre Mountain Range, where we can find these plants. So first we have your Tetrastigma loheri. We have the vulnerable and uh, you discovered begonia depressinerva. We have the hagimit or the ficus minahase. We have Boistilla spermum suaviolens. We have uh, Hornstead jaconoidea. We have the Philippine ground orchid or the Spatoglottis plicata. You have your earth stars or the geastrum hatum. And you have the universal Vatican. So these are just some of the samples that we have uh, documented during our fieldwork in General Nakar. Here are our colleagues in Botany studying begonia species diversity in the upper streams of uh, Kidadaya Falls, collecting their samples. So their study is pollen micromorphology of begonia at General Nakar, Quezon Province in the Philippines. Aside from that, uh, we have study in General T.S. Cavite in a, river, in, in a river in system near subdivisions in Panuyan and General T.S. Cavite where our special project, location sampling site to collect siete contaminants or pakong buaya 
uh, a species of tree fern. This was the actual photo of us finding a Cetea contaminant specimen in the riparian area of the riverian system in Cavite. So going northeast, back to UPL Bilaguna, Quezon Landra, during our first visit in the area, we have documented several plant species such as Ettingera ilatior, you have Medinila anulata, you have your Hoya intrasata, Medinila magnetica, the kapa kapa, and the endemic epiphytic ginger, Edicum philippinense. The same thing goes, so photo documentation, geotagging, and collecting uh, specimens. So here we have, we are guided by the forest rangers of the UPL Laguna Quezon land right? Our study is phylogenetic analysis and DNA barcoding of Hedicum Filipinense with Benjamin, Amilu, Alison, and of course, uh, Andrew. Aside from field works, we, our studies are even, uh, were even pre presented in different biodiversity symposiums across the country. So here's Benjo presenting a variant flora of Pacific River, Batangas Province, uh, an initial assessment of the riverside plants of the sole outlet River of a lake as a preliminary result of their study. This conference was held in Central Mindanao University to present the works of the TUP Herbario. Another feat is for a biota presentation of their study at the medicinal plant of Pacific River in Batangas, Philippines, held in De La Salle University. There are so much doors to open in the plant biology. So another botanical track for another botanical track that we were conducting is in line with algae. So the psychology spearheaded by Dr. Armin Coronado. Here are our colleagues in psychology studying the macroalgal diversity and composition of the Verde Island Passage in Batangas. So the same thing goes in collecting of specimen, but this is collected under the sea. So in photo documentation before pressing it. Here are just some of their photo document samples of marine algae in the Verde Island Passage. So we have the green, the red, and the brown algae. Streaming down and mounting the dried algal specimen in her barring sheets, we have Padina and Halimeda. Aside from macroalgae, we are working and growing and studying for some microalgae species in the laboratory. So we have Dominic Cardoniga and his colleagues in the psychology. This part is dedicated to our alumni, colleagues in the botany who have contributed to the botanical publications of the country with their new discoveries and studies. First, we have Begonia Drefesa Nerva, published in 29, December 2019, the new species, the new cultate species of Begonia that is discovered and described by our very own Mac Andrew Pranada and colleagues from Hidadayai Falls in General Nakar, Quezon Province. To show you, uh, here's a figure of habit of the male and female flowers, roots, the leaves and the rhizomes of Begonia depressing Here's another one recently published in the March 2020 and co-authored by Andrew Pranada, the newly discovered orchid species from Benguet, Dendrochilum ignisiclorum. Another one is, another one that is fresh from the press and published in September 2020, co-authored by Andrew Pranada, a critically endangered Palawan species of begonia. So we have begonia truncatifolia from San Vicente, Palawan. Here's a figure showing you the habit, the flowers, the fruits, the leaves, and the rhizomes of the young Pongatipoya. So another figure on the left side is for the variation of the leaf of the young Pongatipoya. Another discovery from our colleague, Kuya John Michael Agkawili, is Melastoma malabiptin. So this new species of Melastoma is only known from the municipalities of San Mariano and Echage. Isabella province where it's found 
in remnants of secondary lowland forests in the Sierra Madre mountain range. Published just recently in August 2020, a new species of Palawan begonia that was co-authored, of course, by John Michael Agawili from El Nido, Palawan, the critical endangered begonia cabaniliasi. Our colleagues were also actively contributing their floral shots and documentations in the CDFP or Coast Digital Flora of the Philippines, where you can compare the image of your specimen collected. So here are some of MacAndrew's contribution to the Phyto images. Here are some of John Michael's contribution to the site, the Phyto images. And here are some of Miss Amelou's contribution to the site. Well, you can visit this site at phytoimagesu.edu for your reference. Uh, both of you reaching out to the community featuring the very first UP Herbarium Extension Program in Barangay Pesa, Purok Aguinaldo, in General Nacarquesan Province, mga paraan ng pangangalaga at protekta ng mga kapatubong alaman ng kabundukan so to enlighten the residents of General Naka on the importance of protection and conservation of native plants in their area, Dr. Armin S. Coronado and Professor Annalie S. Hadsal gave an informative talk on the importance of riparian area and conservation of native plants to the residents of Barangay Pesa. We have also reached out to the indigenous tribe leader of the Remontados, the IT governor, Thelma Aumentado, and the member of the General Nacar province, uh, Forrester Jean Aumentado. We conducted workshops uh, on how to cultivate oyas and on how to grow their own pako fern that may help the residents of the Barangay Pesa to generate income sustainably by using native plants within their area. Here's the whole program committee and the participants of the extension program. Of course, there will always be a side trip. If you are seeking for an adventurous type of journey, yes, you get it right. Botany is the right track for you. So we have side trips with Professor Anneli Hadsal, Professor of Plant Biology in the Institute of Biological Sciences of the UPLB at Seven Falls in General Nakar and at Mount Kiri Forest Research, together with Christine Joy Luna and MacAndrew Pranada posing under the trunk of Peter Santos Quadrialatus Orto. Back at Makiri Forest Research with Ma'am May, Salvador, and some of my colleagues in Bodine who went trekking up to the peak two of the Mount Kiri Summit. So here are some of our finds in Mount Makiri Forest Research. We have the Malabo'o or Raclesia, Malab Raclesia Lagasque. You have your Tayabak or Strongyloda Macrobotus and Hoya Multiflora at the Station 1 of the Mount Pakin Forest Research. So as a young scientist, you can actually make big impacts in the scientific community as well as uh, the environmental conservation. So what can you do? So these are some of the simple things with big impact. So after graduating, we went planting native trees in the UPLB Laguna Quezon Land Grant to give back to nature. So about 350 tree saplings were planted and another 500 was planted when I went back in June, uh, July 2019. Uh, we have planted Shorea Conforta or Mala Anonam. We have planted Kizidium polycephaloides, Lipote, Shorea palosapis or palosapis, Parque Timuriana, and Kupa, and other native tree species that are in their nursery. Extending our forces, me and Jiro Manulat have reached out to the non science people to give a talk on the native trees and their importance at the Lemesa Dam and the Reservoir before planting native trees of Lipote in, partner, in partnership with an environmental. NGO. So as a young scientist, it is important for us to get involved. So here are some apps that you can 
download in your smartphones. We have Ecosia, iNaturalist, and Academia. So first up, we have Ecosia. Ecosia is a search engine application with a cost. So for every 45 searches, they will plan at least sampling as a pledge. So instead of using Google, uh, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Bing, Yahoo, or Mozilla Firefox, then you can switch to Ecosia and plan a tree. Community science is important as it brings scientists and communities together. So to solve a local challenge, and this initiative was designed to increase community engagement through scientific research. So iNaturalist is an app that involves local knowledge, collective action and empowerment. So by just one click in this app, you can help improve biodiversity conservation and links to ecosystem-based management and environmental sustainability. So if you ever see a new organisms, or if you ever see a new organism in your eyes, uh, well, take a picture of it and post it in this app. Well, who knows, you'll be the first one to discover it. Uh, of course, it is important that you share your studies to other people as well for future and possible collaborations and for citations on your work. So whenever you're going to finish a paper or a study, if you're kind to share it to finish, uh, if you're kind to share it to other researchers, you may upload them here in academia. So we help one another. So of course I would like to thank, or I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all of these individuals who have helped me finishing this present presentation for you. Uh, of course, thank you so much. And I'm forever grateful to have you as my friends and colleagues. So we have Mary Eleanor Salvador and Macandro Granada, John Michael Agawili, Maritone U, John Alberto Arribinario, Dominic Cardoniga, Tristan Jake Valle, Audrey Tanglao, Clarice Alison Santos, Amelio Hermoso, Benjamin Wilgram Cordes, Justin Joy Luna, Nitzi Rabua, Benjo de Guzman, Jessica Cristina Colambo, Resi Labiste, Hannah Eunice Mendez, Isel Don Gatbayer, Hannah Agape Castillo, and Roxanne Maniquez for drawings. So of course, this concludes my discussion on the plant biology track. Thanks for listening, I hope. You get encouraged to, to take this track. Thank you. The forest is calling and we must go.